Welcome to the Flower Lounge, a place for conversations with wildly creative people and a little plant-loving wisdom to help you experience life in full bloom. I'm Katie Hess, flower alchemist and founder of Lotus Way, and I believe in a world where we're all living at our personal edge. peanut butter whiskey I know we were just talking about whiskey and honey because my I'm just getting over bronchitis and my throat was froggy let's put it that way (laughs) (laughs) Um, welcome to the flower lounge I am really excited that this episode we're recording here in the new building it's very very exciting to be sitting across from Kaya Hunter who is now I can say to everyone, she's my acupuncturist. I've been looking for an acupuncturist in Phoenix for so long. I used to go to see fabulous practitioners in New York City, and it was the only place that I could find people. And somehow, magically, I found Kaya. And so we've been working together for a while. And she has an amazing history of experience. She did massage and body work for 10 years and pelvic care. And she's been doing acupuncture for the last five years acupuncture, cupping, gua sha, and a whole other bag of tricks that she has, along with facial acupuncture and cupping, which I'm sure we'll talk about. She's a huge fan of traditional medicine because it just makes so much sense to her, as it does to me. And in her free time, she's so into it that she studies the human body, reading articles, and staying up to date on all the latest health info. She has a seven-year-old son that she hangs with, and She eats a ridiculous amount of homemade pesto. And every morning for breakfast, she has gluten-free chocolate chip waffles with peanut butter, maple syrup, and honey, which I think is amazing. So thanks so much for being with us, Kaya. Thanks for having me (laughs) post-waffle time. (laughs) That's so good. I used to eat chocolate chip pancakes when I was a kid. And sometimes we, actually, when we'd go on the flower lunch tours, it was a ritual. Every morning we'd have chocolate chip blueberry pancakes gluten-free oh that sounds good I haven't done the blueberry in it Mm. but it's like the ritual it's a morning ritual that just to me it's grounding even though most people would be like that's not good for you like it makes my soul happy we're good (laughs) (laughs) oh man so okay so where do we start what should we talk about first oh my gosh yeah I mean there's a lot there's so much so much well how I got started maybe Yeah. How did you get started? So I grew up in a small town, like 5,000 people up in Eastern Oregon. So not like Portland at all. The exact opposite. (laughs) I lived on the Idaho border. So I actually went to high school in Idaho, but I've always wanted to be a doctor since I was a kid. Like that was my thing. Always was taking care of people, always learning about the human body, even then as a young kid, Wow. just trying to nourish people and help them feel better. And then I, I think during high school, I got in a car accident, got some whiplash and they put me on like three different pain pills. So I was like sitting in class and I was like really freaking high and I hated it. I did not like it. I think I took the pills for like two days before I was like, no, this isn't working. It didn't even take care of the pain. It was just like, I was in pain and I was on drugs. It was awful. It's <laughs> terrible. Yeah. And in school. <laughs> exactly. And in school trying to learn. I think it was in Holocaust class. Like that's oh, not no. something you want to... <laughs> be high in. (laughs) So I, my dad knew a chiropractor, which was really, he was the only chiropractor in our small town. So I went and got adjusted and that was my first introduction to holistic medicine. And it took away the pain, like nobody's business. I was like, Oh, I can think I can see, I can sleep. Like it was a big deal. Yeah. That and some other experiences with doctors. I was just like, yeah, this isn't the route I want to take. So I, what I did was I went to massage school so I could have a good career by getting my undergrad in psychology. Well, I tried to figure out like what route I wanted to go. And after massage school, I was introduced to a book called Staying Healthy with the Seasons. And it was based on traditional Chinese medicine and how we transform through the seasons, just like nature, because we are part of nature. And that blew my mind and made so much sense to me. So after that, I just continued studying traditional Chinese medicine. What part of it stands out to you as an example? You know, I think that I just just saw everything as so like I grew up believing that we were just so static that everything was just this way and I don't know maybe I didn't put much thought into it but I also really love nature and I think just seeing that oh we change of course we change why wouldn't we we as women know we change every single month so just to see that in a book and realize that we all go through cycles and I mean I a lot more tired and I don't want to get out of bed in the winter versus the summer I'll pop right up and get on with it like 
just seeing that and being like, oh, there is no separation. Like realizing there's no separation was a big deal for me. Mm. (laughs) Total alignment there. There is no separation with nature. And what happened in acupuncture school? Like how did that unfold that philosophy inside of you or, you know, how did you blossom as you learned more? I was super lucky because I had been doing massage for like 10 years up to that point. So I connected with the human body and I'd studied so much before I went to school that when I was in school, everything just clicked. It made so much sense. So I was able to explain things and understand things in ways that nobody else could, which was super cool and helpful. And I feel like really helped me blossom and understand this medicine in a deeper level. It's such a early part of that career, I guess you'd say. Like, yeah, I don't know what else to say about that. Well, I just was thinking about massage and I know that I've gone to you on occasion when like my bones are out of place in my back and there are massage therapists and there are like people who know the body. Yeah. I would put you in the latter category because I mean, you essentially like really gently, gently, gently move my bones back into place or encourage them back into place, which I don't think is right normal, normal. even for no. massage therapists to have that quality or skill set yeah it's just you know I swear I was just I don't know if I've done this in a past life or something but just to have that understanding and love like this is a calling for me it isn't just like oh I think I'll do acupuncture now like this was something I love like when I'm into something I'm learning everything I can about it and listening to the body so I come from a place where I really want to honor whoever's on my table and I want to honor their connection with spirit or nature or whatever you want to call it and so just to force things that seems like so western medicine to me they just want to throw a pill and force you into a certain way I mean even chiropractors even though I love chiropractic like some of the the techniques are so aggressive and forceful and I'm just like that just doesn't make sense to me in in nature do you see anything forceful like you do but does any good come of it like flash flood that's forceful and destructive so to me it just didn't make sense so to hold the body and to be able to guide it instead of forcing it to do something it doesn't want to do seems a lot more progressive than well the whole philosophy is that the body is seeking balance by itself anyway right Right. you're just like giving it some road signs or tweaking it so that it can find that balance versus assuming that it's against you that it's your enemy that there's something fearful and everyone wants to wage war on the body. Isn't it so weird? <laughs> this, this waging like a fever. Why would our body have a fever if it wasn't good for it? You know, I always think about like icing an injury after you get injured. That never made sense to me. Like I was like, why are we doing this? And now studies are showing that if you ice after an injury, that like delays the body's healing, it stagnates, and keeps all the yeah stuff in the joints. So I'm right? like, well, of course the body's going to do what it needs to do to get you better. Its whole goal is to keep you alive. And so, yeah, I don't understand why we're fighting it all the time. Numbing it. Yeah, numbing it. Oh my gosh, we're really good at that. In every sense of the way. Yeah. You know, it just reminds me, being in this building, I was going to tell you the story earlier about this beautiful man who was a general contractor and he was referred to me. Did I tell you the story? You might have, but go he, ahead. He was referred to me by a really dear friend and mentor of mine to help me with this building project. And he's just a huge sweetheart, like an amazing man. And he had all these adopted kids and like super smart guy. And he woke up one morning and didn't feel well and went to the doctor. And then they escalated him to the hospital and they told him he had lung cancer. They put him on chemo and radiation and 32 32 days later, he was gone. Oh my gosh. And I just, you know, without knowing too much about his particular situation, because I, I wasn't a part of it. So I really don't have the means to, you know, make judgments or claims or anything. But when I hear stories like that, my gut says it wasn't actually what was happening in his body that was taking him out. It was, you know, levels of chemicals that were introduced to his body that. Yeah, you just dropped a nuclear bomb. At the same time, if your body's already compromised, trying to handle a particular situation, Mm -hmm. then you add more to it and you just, the body just can't you know, manage all of that. Which doesn't make sense. Our body can heal. Like we were designed to heal. So some of the things we do, um, I was telling you that, you know, over the 100,000 deaths they estimate were caused by properly prescribed medication last year. And it's the leading cause of death in people under 50. Properly prescribed medication, killing people. And nobody's talking about it. Why aren't we talking about this? 
I also saw today that Tylenol is being linked to brain damage in children. And that's what everybody's go to for fevers, I believe, is children's Tylenol. So ibuprofen kills your gut bacteria, which is your first line of defense. And so many people are on that because they're in pain. And for me, I was just like, I have to find a different way. Like, this stuff's crazy. We need to naturally support our bodies. Like, Well, there's been extensive research, too, showing that kids need to go through phases of fevers to actually grow and to mature their brains. I know that at, at home, there's a 10-year-old, my niece, and she, we noticed pretty much every year she'd have this terrible fever. And she, you know, unless it got like super bad, we'd never give her anything but yeah. peppermint Euro tea or something. And we noticed that every time the fever was over, you could visually see like energetically, emotionally, physically, she had matured. Oh my gosh. Way. That's like walking on coals. How cool is that? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Have you done that? Not yet. <clears throat> I would do it though. I saw some, a recent research with Dr. What's his name? Andrew Wiel. Wiles. Well, Andrew Wiles. Yeah, yeah. He was talking about how people in hip, under hypnosis were able to walk through coals and feel like the coals were cold and they had no blisters on their feet and vice versa. They put something cold on their skin and told them it was hot and they blistered from it. Ooh. So I know the power of the mind, right? Whoa. That stuff is so cool to me. Wow. So cool. I don't know if you follow, follow Dr. Joe Dispenza's work. Mm -hmm. It's all about plugging in to the quantum field and just getting your mind into a state of manifestation. But he talks about like, he does these week long courses where you do these intensive workshops and you can tell they have MRI studies that show the moment you plug into that quantum field, like your brain changes, your eyes change, like everything about you changes. And he's had a ton of cases where people are dissolving tumors within the week that they're there all because of the power of the mind and just opening your paradigm, really. We're so limited. Our thoughts are so limited. Our environment's so limited. So once we can expand and break out of that, like possibilities are endless. You know, in the, in the flower essence world, my teachers would always say that, that you went by the, by the time something would reach a physical level, manifest yeah. physically in your body it had traveled through emotional mental energetic spiritual and it was like something you weren't really paying attention to or listening and so it was like the last ditch effort of your consciousness your own consciousness's way to give you a red flag and say this is something you really need to pay attention yeah to. there is a pattern you know whether it's like you know I, I look at my own life and I can call myself on my own uh, stuff which is like I don't always make time for three meals I don't mm -hmm. always drink enough water. The simplest thing so for wellness, you know, that simple nourishment. Um, so like, where does that come from? There's like a pattern that creates that. And then like really tackling that pattern, pattern with meditation or flower essences or acupuncture or whatever. How do you, in your practice, how much do you see of what's happening with people physically as being linked to emotional, mental? Patterns? Oh yeah, there are... I I believe I believe the same thing. I absolutely think the that when you're physically feeling it, it's a last ditch effort for your body to go, look at me. I've been trying to send you a message. You're not listening. And I think that's why people in this country are so sick. We are such a fast paced, busy, busy, busy place. And nobody makes time to decompress. Nobody makes time to like listen or tune in. Like we're all on our phones. We're on social media. We're working. We're not sleeping. Like, and that's, I've, feel like insomnia. I saw some studies that were showing that's through the roof too, of course, but if we're not dealing with these things and decompressing during the day, of course, we're not going to be able to sleep at night. It's our soul trying to be like, hi, I have an issue. <laughs> Will you pay attention to me? You're not doing anything right now. <laughs> but I see it with everybody. And again, patterns, that's Chinese medicine. We look for patterns. We look for cycles in people and see how it's reflecting. So yeah, absolutely. It's always spiritual, always. I remember I saw this one guy and guys are funny. I never know how to approach because, you know, sometimes they're a little uh, non-emotional. They don't want to talk about it. But this guy got in a car accident a few years ago and, you know, he'd done the chiropractic, he'd done massage, he'd done PT, he'd done everything. And so he found me. And so I'd asked him, he showed me where his back pain was. And I was like, oh, have you had an experience with like fear, like intense fear in your life? And he looked at me and like shocked and he just, as he was abused as a child. And so he was like blown away. And so the timing of it happened to be 
when his wife was pregnant with their child. So it was like this pattern of the stuff he hadn't dealt with, like becoming a dad, being afraid of having those patterns of abuse carried out in his family. Car accident will shove you and move you forward. So it was like a huge wake up call, but to have that mind blowing look of how did you know this is really weird? It's pretty cool, but that's how I see everybody. I ask all those questions. Like, I think we talked about that. What spiritually could be going on? <laughs> what have we not told about? And I talk to everybody about it because nobody's asking those questions. And again, the Western medicine, we're just masking supplements, even. We're masking this whole CBD, marijuana thing. Oh my gosh. Um, can be masking. Right. Well, let's just get into that because it's really popular right now. Yeah. You, you brought it into the conversation. I did. Oh, man. <laughs> I might be burned at the stake now. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? I think it's just like a pill. Like it's a mask. Yes, it's natural. So that's great. But some people, I bet you can utilize it for healing. But in my experience, what I've seen, a lot of people don't heal. It's just another way to escape, another numb way out. to numb out, and a, another way to mask. So I met someone the other night who's like, oh, well, it helps my digestion. I'm like, cool. How long have you been doing it? Has your digestion healed or is it just helping? And it was Cover it's totally covering. It was just temporarily helping. And when you don't get to the root of an issue, eventually it will crop up somewhere else. You can mask it all you want, but it's going to pop out somewhere else. Which means that it's exacerbated. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot harder to fix. Because it's moved. Because it's moved. It's gone deeper into the system. Oof. Yeah. It's not good. Digestion is kind of the first layer there. Once it gets deeper in the body, then we're looking at things like cancer. We don't want to do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's the best um, uh, argument I've heard for yeah. anti right. CBD anti and marijuana. Right. It's yeah, I mean, I think so many of these things, they come in waves of trends, right? And people yeah, are like, oh, it's so trendy. And, and people are, are reading things and listening to what people are saying, but they're not actually, you know, no long-term... No, like what really happens over a long period of time? It's the same way that when we use our cell phones, like we, oh yeah, we don't know until we have our, you know, through experience, what is it, what's happening to our bodies with long-term cell phone use, and you know, some of the things we know, like oh, I hold my cell phone too long, my joints start to hurt, or something feels absolutely, you know, funky in my ear when I'm holding up my cell phone to my ear. But our, have, you know, with some of these things that are really trendy in terms of quote unquote, so-called healing the body, mm -hmm. have we actually extensively studied them? I think that's one of the things that I'm just like in love with Chinese medicine. It's like, what, 5,000 years yeah. of research? 5,000 years. <laughs> I mean, Western medicine is what, a few hundred years? A couple of hundred years old. Right. <clears throat> right. And 5,000 years. And a lot of people were like, like to say, well, Chinese medicine isn't well re researched. I'm like, have you not been on that? <laughs> Are you sure about that? Because they come up with studies every day showing it beats medication, whether it's IVF stuff, whether it's pain stuff, morphine. I mean, whatever it is, it's anti-nausea. We're kicking the crap out of the medication. And I'm like, okay. I've seen documentaries where the you can actually, I mean, this, this is like very, very edgy, but where hospitals in China where they're using it for anesthesia. Yeah. Like doing brain they're, surgery. They're totally like that. Using needles to shut down the... The, pain response. the documentary 9,000 needles, 3,000 needles. I don't even know what it's called, but they follow a ex-football player, I believe. And he was paralyzed after an accident and they got him walking again. And the China, the acupuncturist that worked on him said if he would have came in earlier, like after the accident, he would have had a hundred percent recovery. Whoa. So there's some crazy things out there. They're starting to incorporate acupuncture in hospitals here in the States too, which Where? is, um, I think in, I want to say like Nebraska, they've got somewhere, wow. Seattle, I'm sure California. It's about time. Yeah. Even children's hospitals. I've seen them treat children for like nausea when they're on doing their chemo and radiation type things. So, so most people have, I'm going to guess a fair amount of people have tried acupuncture, but let's just say there's a percentage of listeners who have never tried acupuncture before. What would you tell them? Like, what is it? What's actually happening? So first of all, a lot of people, their hesitation is the needles. And I, I almost call them acupuncture pins because the word needle just doesn't even represent what this thing is. It's, I don't know, it's a piece of metal, but it's not as aggressive like as you would think. Yeah, it's tiny. super, it's super tiny. Um, but what it does is it's a catalyst for your body. So it kind of is like, 
the spark of life that gets things moving, which is super cool. So you're doing all your healing. I'm just there supporting and guiding the body. So it actually helps retrain the brain to, to just be different, which is necessary. <laughs> How does it do that? How does it do that? Through, so the brain and the body, you know, they have a nice communication system that sometimes gets blocked by different things, usually stress, trauma. They'll, they'll change the communication between the brain and the body. And we all know that if we're not communicating properly, that things get messy, whether it's between you and your kid, you and your partner, you and your boss, like things get ugly when you're not communicating. So when you stick an acupuncture needle into a certain area, it sends a signal through the body to the brain going, hi, remember me? Like, let's talk this out. It's like a therapist almost. <laughs> and so it creates a whole new nerve pathway through your dendrites, which are a part of your nervous system. But it sets up that new communication way and creates a whole new path so your brain and body can reconnect in a way that either was lost or never was quite there if that makes sense. Mm, so you're helping people attain a capacity or a potential that yeah. maybe they have never experienced before. Yeah, absolutely. Which is trippy. And I noticed when you work on people, I mean, I've different, I know that different acupuncturists have different methods of tuning into their patients, but I know, you know, and obviously there's this, <laughs> you know, pulse diagnosis and tongue diagnosis, which I think is the most advanced form of diagnosis yeah that crazy are stuff. in the world but I, I noticed also that you just sort of tune in if you just sort of like ask the body what's going on yeah um if you listen you'll get instructions it's really funny <laughs> do you ever get instructions that you're sort of like or in the beginning when you did you get information that you were like really <laughs> oh all the time and I'll verbalize that to people especially if it's something really random I'm like how does this even connect and I'll be like I, I can't even think of an example but I'll be like so your body's telling me to do this and I don't know why and usually they'll have an explanation and they'll just laugh it off and I'm like okay so it knows <laughs> but <laughs> and I and I wish like I don't know if it's an electromagnet thing like you know we all have this this aura around us that projects what out to eight feet, eight inches, something like that. This magnetism. So when you plug into that, and then of course the myofascial tissue is one big piece of connective conducting tissue. It talks. So just having your hands on the body sometimes it'll reveal a lot about you. <laughs> if you're willing to listen. So oh, that's so great. It's and, super cool. And how long do you usually let the needles sit? How long do you usually let somebody cook for? So it depends. I've had some people that when they're really, really exhausted, they've been through trauma, they've been through a lot, they'll actually get really fatigued with the needles in. So I will pull them out around eight minutes. Sometimes, again, the body will send a message like, oh, 12 minutes. Or I'll be sitting there and all of a sudden I'll be like, oh my gosh, they need those things out. Or opposite, like sometimes I feel like they need 40 minutes. So for the most part, it'll be like a 20 to 25 minute treatment, but give or take, depending on the body, what it's been through and what it's saying. What are some of the most incredible results of things that you've seen with needles? Oh man, I had a lady who had an ovarian cyst. I put a couple needles in her eyebrow and then she came back the next day just to like hug and tell me that she, all her pain went away and she passed the cyst. I'm like, I don't know what that looks like, but it, it was messy. <laughs> And then after that, all of her, all of her symptoms, the pain, the weird periods, they all went away. Wow. That was really cool. I had an 11 month old boy. He had RSV and it's during his first month of life. So it's like a respiratory virus in the lungs and you could hear him breathe. It was just thick and mucusy and like he was underwater almost just like choking and that the doctors kept telling his mom it was normal. And I was just what? like, well, oh yeah, that be normal. No, I know, right? Fluid in the lungs. That sounds super normal. I put one needle in and for babies, it's in and out because they don't have the advanced nervous system like we do. So I put this little tiny, tiny tap as we call them with babies in and he immediately coughed up everything and it was, you couldn't hear him breathing anymore. When he came back, I like got my stethoscope out and you, his lungs were clear. You couldn't hear oh. anymore. That was really cool. So people want to argue placebo effect with acupuncture, which is fine. But that baby was 11 months old and he coughed up everything. His body was so ready to get, get rid of it. Wow. It was really gross though. That's amazing. <laughs> um, 
I'm like, let me think lots of emotional releases, like people just people going back to a time they were extremely traumatized, whether it was rape or childbirth, like physically going back to that minute, like almost like a PTSD vision, but almost separating themselves from the trauma, like they're watching themselves go through the trauma. And then when they get done, when the treatment's over, they like process and then it's like over, there's no more PTSD, there's no more negative associations. Um, with that experience, they have like completely healed in a way that is absolutely mind blowing. And that one I was like, I didn't see that coming. I'm like, okay. But right, you thought you were signing up to be a doctor and heal people of their physical issues, and then all of the <laughs> all of a sudden, traumatic. I was like, okay, so you give the body space to process, and it's going to process. So I honoring my patients, like that's the biggest thing for me. I really want to honor where you're at and what you want to go through. And yeah, I know the people that have gone through that. It's never their intention to do it, but when their body's ready to process something, it just does. It's super There's no stopping beautiful. It. There's no stopping it. <laughs> but it's also very nourishing. Like how Gentle. amazing to shed something so heavy. That's been the coolest. That's probably the coolest experience mm. is letting people shed that. But again, I'm not doing anything. I'm just there to support you. <laughs> what about cupping? Let's talk about cupping. I'm in love with cupping. I'd never tried it before. I had always wanted to try it before I met you. <laughs> and then we just started doing it a lot. Because um, it's amazing. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Why is it so amazing? So it's amazing. So again, we're going back to that myofascial tissue, which is that one big piece that intertwines every cell in your body. Which the Western world is just now discovering, just right? now discovering. <laughs> like, and, they're, and they're still trying to break it into pieces too. They're like, oh, well, this one is in the stomach and this one's in the brain. No, guys, it's one big piece. You know, like one huge, one huge like hug. I think, I think like sometimes it helps me visualize. Somebody at one point told me like, you know, when you're cooking a chicken, you yep. get out the raw chicken and there's that, sometimes there's that like really transparent-y, like filmy. Yep. That's the myofascial. That's the myofascial right? tissue. And so we have like one huge, we're like enveloped in one giant. Enveloped, we're like piece, hugged right? and it's keeping us together. <laughs> and it does a lot of things. What does it do? So I've heard the, the medical doctors who take acupuncture courses, they describe acupuncture as working at an atomic level on the myofascial plane. So electrons, which make up or are part of atoms, they transfer on that myofascial plane, so to say. Yeah. So, so, okay, because let me interrupt here to make sure I understand. Are you saying that? Well, I know we're talking energetically, so this is hard to locate. But what are you saying that the meridians are located through the myofascial tissue? Or I honestly that? don't really believe in that meridians. You don't believe in meridians. I don't believe in meridians or points. What do you believe in? I believe that there's like electromagnetic currencies that run through the body frequencies and they're not channeled into rivers. I think that mm. <laughs> it's just this big flow of places. So yeah, I'm not I'm not hundred percent sold on the meridian theory, which I know is really, really weird, but and how, what does traditional Chinese medicine say about that? Uh, it depends on what you look at. There are so many different families. Um, traditional Chinese medicine is a blend of all different types of families coming together and being like, this is what we see. Yeah, it's it's a little messy. <laughs> I guess it does feel a little bit black and white if you are yes, thinking very Western thinking. Physical, like, I have seven rivers and they're, this one's going that direction. Right. And this one's going that direction and you can open the flow up close it down or it's yeah. a little too simplistic. So think of the earth, like there's meridians on the earth. If you have a globe, right? They draw these lines, longitude, latitude as a guide, as a way to map stuff. And I feel like that's what they did with the body too. We're all reflections of everything, right? We're all fractals. So if our body is a reflection of the earth, then there's no meridians, but there's magnetism because we know that the earth has magnetism. So I believe that it was just used as like a roadmap to be like, this area does this. This, like mm -hmm. this area is desert. This area is a swamp, you know, it's kind of the same thing in the human body. But not to say that the desert in Arizona may not change in the next 50 to 100 years into a tropical right. place. Who so knows? same thing can happen to the body. Absolutely. We evolve, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty crazy. That makes a lot of sense. And so I think maybe, so is that one of the reasons that you have so much, well, you and probably other practitioners see so much flexibility in terms of 
oh, don't worry if you're wearing really tight jeans and I can't get the points in your thighs or yeah. your, in your arm or your ears or your There's face. There's always your... another point. So again, with that theory of like fractals and everything is a reflection of everything else. So us as an entire human body, we can treat, I'm like trying to figure out a way to paint this picture for people listening, but you can take any area of the body. So say you're looking at the hand and you can treat the entire human body on the hand based on these fractals or reflections of the, the whole body. So the middle finger tends to be the top of the head, um, middle of the hand, the middle of the palm is like the stomach area and so on. So you can do that anywhere in the body. Anywhere, hands, whether it's the feet, hands, feet, ears, ears face. arms, legs, face. I mean, anywhere. Everywhere. Everywhere. So if I can't what get about your bum? Oh, probably. <laughs> probably you can get there on the bum. <laughs> I haven't played too much but acupuncture, but. <laughs> That's so funny. That's interesting. I tend to only think of like, you know, where things end, like hands, feet, face, ears. But that would make sense that, of course, mm -hmm. you know, your elbow also has. Yeah corresponding connections to the rest of your body everywhere so. everywhere so that's why i can treat knee pain with an elbow and it works really stinking well it's all images wow that's so great yeah i think it you know like it's like always shocking when you have something wrong with your body physically like let's say allergies or your lower back went out or you know something yeah. and you're like why does this affect the rest of my body like, right. Why am I so tired when I have allergies or why is this little pain in my back, but it's hurting my shoulder and my neck and my mm -hmm. elbow and my ankle and my, you know, yeah. like, like for some reason, it always surprises us that we're all so connected. So connected. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it does. It's pretty funny though. <laughs> Bizarre. It's, it's one body. We're one us. It's one earth, one existence, oh, right? Where, where did we go? Cupping. Yeah. How, how did we get back to this? Myofascial. Myofascial. Oh, yeah. <laughs> meridians don't exist my <laughs> that's pretty funny yeah i can go off on all sorts of wild crazy same tangents here, same here. so cupping so it works with the myofascial tissue which is that big envelope that big hug that encases every cell in your body so if one area gets you know tr like tightened because of trauma or emotional stress the entire rest of it's going to be affected so yeah, big deal. And if it doesn't unwind on its own, you start to create a different pattern. So say you got in a car accident and you really hurt your wrist because it slammed against the steering wheel. Well, eventually, if that doesn't get resolved, the wrist reflects the uterus, the wrist reflects the digestive system, like it images a lot of things and that myofascial will all tighten in all these areas oh and get God. pulled toward, the air, toward that area. Oh my so God. yeah, it's this, <laughs> I know it's a lot. Mind-blowing. Mind-blowing, right. So that's why it's good to always do your acupuncture on the, the hands, ankles, feet, arms, and do the cupping on the body. That's so interesting because when I visualize that like transparent, like beautiful tissue, mm -hmm. it makes sense to me. Yeah, like if you just grab that tissue on somebody's like behind their shoulder blade and yanked on it, mm -hmm. it's going to pull on so many other yeah. parts of the body. But it never occurred to me that it would also affect digestion. Yeah, everything, the organs, because it's all enveloped in the same thing. So when that gets tight, there's going to be restriction everywhere else. And we don't want that. We want freedom. And you're even saying when someone comes in, like, say I come in and mm -hmm. I've got like all this like neck and shoulder and back tension, even that, I don't want to say subtle, but it is pretty gross level. But <laughs> even that level of tension can create problems in the organ systems and oh yeah absolutely. other places in the body absolutely if it's been that way long enough there's going to be a restriction of electrical currents that the brain sends to the body or there's going to be a restriction of blood flow and if you're not getting blood or these messages then you're not healing and you'll start to show symptoms mm. and even emotionally this can happen that's why uh, chinese medicine associates different emotions with different organs that's why everyone's living are a little angry because we are very stressed out here in America and probably other parts of the world too, I'm sure. But yeah, when that, when the even stress, emotional stress happens, it will tighten up that tissue if it's reoccurring for a long period of time and you'll start getting issues in that area. Oh my God. So, okay. So what is cupping for people who have never done cupping before? The heck so is it? it's, how can it help? Oh gosh. So good. So good. I'm know. like, it's so amazing just to think that 
The cupping is going to help your inner organs. Okay, tell us what it is. Yeah, so it's a vacuum created by either a flame or a pump, and a, you can use a cup. <laughs> That's a cup like little thing. Um, what I do is I burn the air out with a flame, remove the flame, no fire is going to touch you, and I put the, the cup on the skin. So it creates a vacuum, which means all the, um, the molecules are burnt out of the cup, all the oxygen, and what happens is your body will push because of science, <laughs> it will push a suction cup. It basically is like a suction cup, like the molecules that are inside your body push to fill the space in the vacuum of the cup. And it just relaxes and releases everything. So you're increasing blood flow. You're releasing that myofascial tissue and getting everything to flow and communicate better. So, yeah. so you're saying that, I mean, I hate to be such a downer on Western science, <laughs> but like something that the Western science scientists are just now discovering myofascial tissue right. and how important it is the chinese literally have been working on this tissue for the last five thousand years yeah with these cups and they understood that it is the key to a happy and healthy life like this is restricting that or unrestricting that and getting it to free flow is like the key to youth it's the key to stress reduction it's the key to health and well-being and they've known that for thousands of years. <laughs> and how come you get these big, beautiful, globe-like, purple, bruised blotches on your back when you get cupping? So you get those big, beautiful marks, <laughs> those drafts. As somebody looked like a draft yesterday when they walked out. <laughs> but sure. you, you draft. She had draft. <laughs> Thoughts. <laughs> she, uh, you get those because um, that, that represents a stagnation in your body. So an area that has not been getting good, fresh blood. So you think about a muscle when it tightens up, when things get tight, like nothing can flow. If you kink a hose, there's not a lot of water getting through there. So what cupping does is it unkinks the hose and it brings up everything that's been settling in the muscles for who knows how long. So the longer something's been like blood flow, restricted blood flow has been in the muscle, the darker it gets. Oh God, I'm sure if there's no blood flow, things are getting like stuck. In oh yeah, you see nasty, almost black purple marks for people that have been... Wow yeah, really stuck for a really long time. And then if people aren't getting enough blood flow to an area, it'll actually look white. It doesn't stay that way, but you can see like after you take off the cup, it will be white. Mm. You A healthy tissue will turn a nice pink color. You want to see a nice pink color after you remove the cup. That means everything's flowing great. There's no restrictions. So it's a great way to gauge your health. Wow. But the purple, yeah, you've been stuck. And how often do people get cupping done typically? Typically, it depends. So it depends if you're like more into that stuck phase where we need to work things out. I usually cup an area like maybe once a week. If the marks stay longer, I'm going to have to go to a different spot because we don't want to just keep re-traumatizing the body. We want it to clean up and heal the way it should. And so when you see the, you know, all the purple stuff coming to the surface, that's just going to, the body's going to clean that out. Yep. It brings it to the surface. Your lymphatic system can do its garbage cleaning. <laughs> Take out the trash. <laughs> Wow. And you do this on the face too? I do it on the face, which does not leave marks. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Although one time when I was having really bad TMJ problems where <laughs> jaw pain, yeah. I was watching a movie and I was just messing around with the cups and it felt so good to have them over my jaw that I left them a little too long and they did turn a little purple. <laughs> <laughs> but generally, like when I do facial cupping, it's just to increase the collagen in your face, the elasticity mm. of your face, increase blood flow to your face. Wow. So it'll turn a nice pretty pink color you look really healthy you're like glowing after so it's great to do before you go out for the weekend or have pictures or something like that and, and you like your the basis of your practice isn't you know although you do that in the background of your mind I imagine you're also thinking of the face as the rest of the body so you're actually it's like a subversive healing treatment absolutely based so on vanity. <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly I can like make give you an eye lift while helping your ovaries <laughs> for your testicles <laughs> that's what you got sneaky. going on <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. exactly there's some great I mean along the scalp you can get, do a little facelift here mm -hmm. pull up the forehead get the wrinkles to go away while also treating like re reproductive lines up there, some emotional stuff's up there. I mean, there's so many different ways to image the body. So when you look at the face, then can you tell based on how people are aging, what their weaknesses are? I imagine. Imagine, yeah. yeah. I, you know, I haven't really sat there and looked at it. There's tons of different diagnostics. I look yeah. at veins, like 
for my diagnostics along with the tongue and the pulse, but there absolutely is like colors of the face. You can even tell if there's an organ malfunctioning. If your face has like a greenish tinge to it, we know the liver is acting a little funny. If it's more red, we're looking at the heart and the pericardium, small intestine, it's angio, like, and then different areas correspond with different things. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot. Wow. Yeah. And you can also needle the ears and you can also put seeds in the ears. Yeah, the seeds are great. So you can keep them in for, you know, I tell people until they fall out. But if they're bothering you for some reason, you can pull them out after a few days. I love it. I actually yeah. kind of love that. Look at your crystal. Like good pain. Still in. Oh, I still have one from Costa Rica. Yeah. It doesn't hurt anymore. But I actually like, you know, poking on the, like using the seeds to kind of yeah. get into that spot and fix it. So the the ears were actually a part of the kidneys when you were in utero. So they come from the same area. Isn't that trippy? Yeah. So, and your kidneys in Chinese medicine are the foundation of your health. Like everything's about preserving the kidneys because that always seems like in hospice care. Yeah. They're the the deepest organ. That's kind of like the sign. Yeah. It's not good. Not good. The kidneys do so much, but you can treat anything on the ears like, and they have that strong connection with the kidneys. So you can even do ear diagnostics. I don't know if I was telling you, but I might one of my parlor tricks. I have somebody people should be like, Oh, diagnose me based on my ears. I'm like, Oh man, you need to get laid. <laughs> There's like this area, like right there, that will turn like thick and white if you haven't had enough sex <laughs> or Whoa. you know, self pleasure. I, I studied um auricular therapy for a little while and I, I don't remember all the points anymore, but I remember it. You know, some of the things like propensity for heart attack or, yes. or propensity for low blood pressure Got or down there. being able to count how many molars or wisdom teeth people had removed. So um, cool. And and just like in terms of like I can see where the imbalances are, but I just don't remember what the points are for. But I find it so fascinating. And I think, damn, if every <laughs> single high school student oh my gosh. learned the practice of regular therapy. And when I lived in Mexico, actually, there was a woman, Thalia was her name, and she... Um, she didn't even use seeds. She used a ballpoint pen. Oh, wow. And she would, you know, line everybody up every week and she would take the ballpoint pen and just, when you take a ballpoint pen and you hit the right point and you just, you barely touch the skin and you just twist it. Yeah. You're going to feel it. Holy moly. You are going to feel it. Pain, but a good kind of pain. Yeah, exactly. It's like a release. Walk out with your ears on fire. And so that was the way that she you know, treated all of us working at this place and all the indigenous women and children. I thought it was so brilliant. Like if every so if every kid learned how to do that, we could just be healing each other all yeah. the time. Oh, I sit there and I just like look for places on my ear and I'll be like, oh, and then of course I'll be like, oh, well, my lower back's out. No wonder it hurts right there. <laughs> but it's, yeah, I think that would be so cool to start treating like that. I wonder if there's a way we can get into high schools and like start telling people this thing going out well in the meantime if you're listening you would just recommend massaging your ears massage your ears find those tender points yeah absolutely it's going to help and those nerves connect to the rest of the body like everywhere else and so you can sit there and heal a lot of your stuff just by working on your ears if you feel find a tender point just kind of hang out on it breathe and work it out same with your hands your same feet. with your hands feet whatever you, a lot of people don't Face. like their ears t- touch so you can whatever feels good right <laughs> it doesn't have to be torture <laughs> <laughs> and then what about gua sha gua sha so it works a lot like cupping but instead of like the vacuum pulling up the myofascial tissue it's actually like this pushing motion so This, again, breaks up any, like, tough muscles that have been knotted up for a while and are not getting blood flow. It's become very trendy in the beauty world. Oh, yeah. Jade, wash and rose quartz. You look super pretty. Like Super pretty when you do your face. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Because the wrinkles are scar tissue. So the one of the functions of the gua sha tool is to break up scar tissue. Yeah, it's really nice. I've used it a lot on women who've had cesarean... Oh my gosh, cesarean childbirth. <laughs> I'm like trying to think of a word. Who have gotten C section? C section. Yeah. Oh, on the C. Yep. I've done that on the line. Because oh, a lot of people have pain after that. But same with the face. Like well, the. Oh, go ahead. My, my flower essence teacher used to say that when women would get C sections, like the doctor's just looking to how to sew it back up to make the prettiest scar, but they might be, you know, connecting one with three and two with four. And yeah. Like, who knows, right? So then the energetic system has to figure out a way to maneuver around that space. Yeah. And think about the myofascial tissue. It got cut into, it's trying to repair itself, but there's like all this weird fibrous stuff there. So again, that communication is 
a Locked little down. funky. And we have to get that place to recommunicate in order for it to soften and send the appropriate signals to the appropriate places. Oh, what was the other cool thing you were telling me about? Um, totally unguasha related. That little like... Thing? The allergy thing? No, the little... Which um, I'm like, which one were we talking about? When you touch my lower back, it's like ding. And it's because I was born through a c-section oh yes the okay so primitive reflexes yeah i find that so fascinating <laughs> so i've okay so i've done a lot of random things in my life in my <laughs> short time my short 29 years and yeah, yeah all to do with healing That's i've never so strayed great. from that so it's kind of funny but one of the things i did was um neurosensory integration training so we are born i think with 12 it's been a while since i've done this but i think we're born with about 12 primitive reflexes that help us survive during the first couple of years of life. So I'm just thinking about you and your reaction. Everybody like who has that reaction thing, I think that's great the way you described <laughs> it. So it's a, when your nervous system doesn't mature, you have these primitive reflexes. They're inhibiting your body to perform at its best, we'll just say. So you will you might have like an upper back tickle, ticklishness or a lower back sensitivity where all of a sudden like your hip goes woo up to your shoulder and you like have no idea why. So you just say, oh, I'm ticklish. It's actually your nervous system didn't mature the way it should have. And so you have that primitive reflex. And this there's a propensity for that when you're not born yes, vaginally. When you're not born vaginally or like me, I was born, my mom had like a four hour labor. So I shot out of there really fast. So like with your spinal gallant reflex, you use that reflex, that little nervous signal to like scooch down your mother's vaginal cavity. <laughs> scooch, Again, scooch, scooch, scooch down. So you're like working your way out of the body, <laughs> trying to be born. And then you use it a lot as your baby too, kind of moving around with your hips and your shoulders before you can roll and crawl and all that stuff. So if you had a fast birth or were born by cesarean, you have a tendency to have that and another primitive reflex. ATNR, I believe. There's people who are way, well more versed than me, but it's all interesting stuff. So when you don't work those things out, your body has to overcompensate and learn how to deal with the world in a different way. So kids that are kids or people that are overstimulated by the world or understimulated by the world, maybe have sensory issues, don't like certain textures of foods. I mean, learning disabilities, inability to play sports, coordination, like you should see me do a yoga class. <laughs> they're like, all right, your left hand goes here. And my right arm and my right leg are like out here. And they're like, no, that's not what I said. I'm like, I'm sorry. I have an immature nervous system. <laughs> yeah, there's exercises you can do like yoga to help integrate and make your nervous system a little bit more mature. <laughs> Random side note. Oh my God. I could seriously talk to you all day long. But what I'm thinking is we're just going to have you on as a regular guest because we could probably talk about a million different things. Yeah. I'm one of those people. I don't even know what I know until I start talking about it. Like I totally, I would have never even thought of bringing up the primitive reflexes. <laughs> But there's some cool stuff out there. So people with sensory issues or who have kids who have autism or ADHD, or I've even seen people who, um, older people who've had a stroke and are unable to use their body, go through these programs. And then all of a sudden, they good. Wow. Yeah, it's really neat. There's some cool stuff out there. <laughs> there really is. Oh, I can't wait to talk more. And I can't wait to like announce all our amazing, exciting plans so, for all the, the future. fun things. But we'll just uh, <laughs> let that be for now and share a little bit more later. I can already think of some really, really interesting topics that I want to ask you about, but I'm going to save them for the next conversation. Last question for today. Oh my gosh, I just realized we didn't even do the child. I was so excited to talk to you that we didn't even do the childhood exercise. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that at the end. That's funny. We do that at the beginning of every podcast. Okay. So <laughs> if you have any last like words of wisdom or pieces of advice or insights or things that you commonly find yourself sharing with people? Yeah, I get this a lot, but trust your body. Like seriously, I've had so many people share their stories of, I knew something was wrong or I didn't like what my doctor was doing or I just felt really bad on a prescription drug or no one's listening to me. Oh my gosh, like that's when I tell people, just call me. 
I've given so many consultations where I'm like, and a lot of times it's just giving people permission. Listen to yourself. You know you better than anyone. So it is okay to say no. It's okay to get a second, third, fourth, fifth opinion from somebody. It's okay to, you know, switch doctors. The doctors work for you. You can fire them. <laughs> Nobody knows this, but they work for you. <laughs> they make you cry. They get need to go bye-bye. <laughs> And I think that's, it's all about empowerment. I want everybody to walk away from like me and my treatments going, I know how to take care of my body. Like I feel at home in my body. And I feel like healthcare has become this weird, elusive thing where it's, you see so many fad diets, you see so many fads of here, take the supplement like CBD <laughs> and do this and do that and do this. And everyone's so confused. But if you just really take a minute and trust yourself and notice things about you, you're going to know what's right for you. And so if you need permission to do that, come talk to me. <laughs> a lot of it's just permission. So I'll give you permission now. It's okay to listen to yourself and trust yourself. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> awesome. And if any of you are planning on visiting the building sometime in February for the grand opening of the Truth Teller Flower Lounge and all kinds of amazing grand opening workshops and things we have planned. There may be a possibility. You could also book an appointment with Kaya. We, we have some really fun, fun plans <laughs> with our co-work wellness space that are coming that we'll share more about. Okay. So let's do the beginning first. Okay. Last. 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 Do the beginning last. Yeah. So close your eyes. Okay. And go back to a time in your childhood when you played around flowers or plants or trees. <laughs> and think about what you were doing and who you were with, what you were up to. See if you can pick a favorite. If you've got the favorite, reflect on what the three words would be that you'd use to describe its personality. And then whenever you're ready, share everything about what you were thinking. <laughs> All right. So everything. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I um, actually grew up on a hundred acres and my mom was big into herbs, is big into herbs. But ironically, this wild rose that grew outside our pump house, like I loved that stinking thing. It was pink and it was beautiful and it smelled amazing. And just like that memory of like going and smelling that rose. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. But to me, the words that came up were like knowing stillness and peace, like just almost a sense of like, this is where I'm supposed to be in the universe, which is really strange. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's where that took me back. That's interesting. Love that. So what we find is that when you describe the qualities of the personality of your childhood favorite, it typically would indicate the way in which you bring your greatest gifts into this world. So oh, interesting. With stillness, peaceful, a knowingness, knowing you're at the right place at the right time. I like it. That feels like you. Feels like me. <laughs> Especially with the chaotic world we live in. I'm like, I'm always like just sitting here still, like, okay, I'll watch this fad go by. I know this isn't this isn't real. That's so funny. That's really funny. I like it. We should schedule a regular interview with you where we can just I'm thinking like the the pelvic care, the mug the mugwort, the moxa, mm -hmm. specific conditions. Well, like, there's so many things we didn't talk about. No, so, not even close. Yeah. Um, let's just set up a regular regular thing and we can start asking folks oh if yeah you're, if you're listening and you have specific questions you can always email us at podcast.lotusway.com and we can line those up in a, a special place so that the next time we talk we can dig into some, maybe some specific concerns that folks have and that'd be a good idea recommendations for things to do at home yeah like i spend my time studying i'm a kind of a nerd so <laughs> <laughs> i love to look at things for you and in the ways that make sense to the human body so uh, a lot of times studies will show what i always use coffee and eggs they're bad this year they're going to be great next year you know whatever it is so when I study, I look at how it makes sense with the biochemistry of the body. So if you have questions, please let me know. That's so great. Gives me more fun. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, I already look forward to the next one. And if you're listening, thank you so much for joining us on the Flower Lounge podcast. We really appreciate your support. Thank you so much, Kaya, for being here. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for listening to The Flower Lounge. I'm Katie Hess, and we'll be releasing a new podcast every Wednesday. If you like what you heard or you know someone who might be touched by our conversation, share it with them. And don't forget to subscribe. To find out what your favorite flowers mean about you, take the quiz at lotusway.com.